Good morning from Washington, D.C. It's 10 a.m. on the East Coast of the United States, 7 a.m. in California. It's 5 p.m. in Saudi Arabia. I welcome all of you who are joining us today for the Saudi Center, the SCCA, uh, Saudi Center for Commercial, Age, Commercial Arbitration and, uh, and Friends of SCCA. My name is Delano Roosevelt. I'm the president and CEO of the U.S. Saudi Business Council. We're an organization that uh, has been in existence for more than 25 years. We are in the business of finding opportunities mutually for Saudi Arabia organizations and businesses and U.S. organizations and businesses to provide introductions, uh, uh, open up the doors for opportunities, and once we have uh, made connections. We Our job then is to stay with those organizations right through the entire process until uh, business is initiated uh, in either the United States or Saudi Arabia. Uh, today, we are honored to have with us uh, two guest speakers from the SCCA. Uh, Dr. Hamid Mira. Chief Executive Officer of SCCA, and Mr. Christian Alberti, the Chief of Alternative Dispute Resolution, uh, uh, or ADR, and General Counsel for the SCCA. Uh, both are joining us from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Dr. Mira is an internationally recognized leader and expert with an extensive track record of achievements during his career encompassing banking, investment banking, insurance, and development of related industry standards setting. He has led one of the most important specialized international organizations in Islamic finance, IF, uh, industry, which uh, with activities and members in more than 45 countries. Mr. Alberti is the chief of ADR and general counsel of the Saudi Center for Commercial Arbitration. Uh, is and it's based in Riyadh. He supervises the SCCA's case management secretariat and legal department. Prior to joining the SCCA in 2019, he was assistant vice president of the International Center for Dispute Resolution and International Division of the American Arbitration Association in New York City. He supervised staff and related management uh, activities and oversaw hundreds of large, complex, multi-party arbitrations and mediations covering all types of dispute uh, and industries each year. Um, I thank you both. I know that your schedules are full, but this is a most uh, uh, worthy um, effort to spend our, our time on because as we all know, and those of you who are joining us today, we all know that change is happening uh, quickly uh, throughout the Mideast, not to mention specifically in Saudi Arabia. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is making rapid changes with respect to all aspects of life, of social, business, entertainment, and uh, a lot of times it's very difficult to keep up with what's going on. All for the positive, I might add. So uh, it's um, today's um, presentation is especially timely for anybody who wants to do business in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This subject matter today is certainly uh, uh, imperative that you know where you stand, what your rights are, and and where you can go if you need assistance. Before we we jump into today's program. Just a quick housekeeping note. Um, the, uh, this presentation today will be followed by a question and answer session. Um, at the bottom of your screen, uh, you can. there's a question mark where you can type in uh, questions uh, for either of these gentlemen uh, or myself for that matter, but uh, let's, let's stick to the two gentlemen at hand um, uh, because of the uh, intro for interest of time. Um, and we'll get through as many of the questions as we can 
But please know that if we, for some reason, because we might just simply be running out of time, uh, if we don't get to your question, we will get back to you after the session is over. Uh, inversely, if you think of something after the session is over, please contact us directly and we'll get the, uh, we'll get the answer to your question. What you're seeing today, what you're participating in, will be available um, through a link on our website, and I believe on the SCCA website, but I'll leave it to the two gentlemen to respond to that, but definitely at the U.S. Saudi Business Council, you'll be able to see today's um, uh, webinar. So with that, uh, it's my pleasure to turn it over to Dr. Hamid Mirah. Thank you, Mr. Roosevelt, and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I would like to thank all of you uh, for your time and to, for participating in this webinar. And at the same time, I would like to, to thank the Saudi, uh, the U.S. Saudi Business Council for their uh, strategic partnership with SCCA. And um, uh, this is not the first time to cooperate and to have mutual uh, events that uh, we had one before the pandemic physical in, 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 in the U.S. And this is the second one. And I hope soon that we can shake hands and to come back and together again in one place. So thank you very much. And we are also honored uh, personally and institutionally to have this partnership in general and also to have this webinar in particular. Um, if you allow me just, I would like in the second slide, uh, uh, my, my, my friend and my colleague, uh, Kristen Albertin and I, we will uh, today, we will uh, present uh, five, uh, six topics uh, very quickly within the um, allocated time. Uh, first of all, we are going to speak uh, about two things. Mainly, we are going to speak about the development in ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution in Saudi Arabia in general, and also we'll speak about SCCA, the Saudi Center for Commercial Arbitration. So first of all, we'll give very quick historical background about SCCA, and then we will speak about three related topics, the legislative support for ADR in Saudi and governmental support and judicial support, and then we will give just um, a more focus about SCCA in particular. And then um, my colleague, Christian Alberti, will speak, I will give more details about the recent Saudi case law, which is really important for, for um, uh, uh, lawyers in particular, and even for business people in general. Um, if uh, you allow me, I will, I will start very quickly in the second slide with the historical background. Um, before I speak about laws, regulations in Saudi, I will come to that in the coming slides. But I would like to start about SCCA. SCCA is the first institutional arbitration center in Saudi Arabia. It has been established by a, a, a council of, minister, of ministers uh, a decree has been issued in 2014 um, to establish the Saudi Center for Commercial Arbitration as non-for-profit organization and independent from the uh, public and private sector at the same time. So we are not reporting to the government. We are not part of the government. And at the same time, it was conditioned in that resolution and later in the statute of SCCA, none of the board member the, the, and even the chairman, the chair chairperson and the vice chairperson, chairperson, none of them could hold uh, um, a position in the government. So, for example, the first board of SCCA, the first term of the board, uh, the chairman, some other members, at the time they were from the private sector, as soon as they joined the government, they left SCCA to give SCCA more independence. Also, after that, a lot of steps has been taken, but I think one of the most important things to mention in this slide, the official launch of SCCA was in October, uh, 2nd of October 2016. If you go with me to the second slide, um, uh, you will see one of the first decisions has been taken by the board uh, early days in SCCA is to sign and to go with in a partnership with AAA, ICDR, the American Association of Arbitration in New York and their international arm, the ICDR. And that, uh, that partnership was um, a real partnership. So, so our, our rules, arbitration rules, mediation rules has been drafted in cooperation and in partnership with AAA and also drafting our code of conducts, also training our case counsel that the, the technical team uh, um, was in, in New York. So uh, we were honored to have that uh, partnership and also that illustrated and in, in these 
uh, areas of cooperation. If you go also with me to the second slide, uh, uh, what I'm gonna also uh, mention in this, um, in uh, after after uh, after that partnership, one of the milestones in April 2019, the statute of ICCA also has been issued and enacted uh, by uh, Council of Minister uh, of Ministers resolution or or decree. Uh, to enhance SCCA independence, independence, impartiality, and also to give more power to the board of directors and to the activities of ADR and SCCA. So the ultimate authority of, <coughs> of uh, sorry, the ultimate authority of SCCA is its board, which is independence, and also they are appointed by uh, um, uh, a higher, a higher order by the prime minister. If you go with me to the second slide, um, uh, I think one of the things needs to be mentioned that the third term of the board has been appointed in March 2000, uh, 2021, just a few weeks ago, if I can say that. And as you can see clearly, our board of directors uh, consists of uh, international well-known uh, figures in, in ADR in particular and in legal and, and uh, business sectors in general. So not less than 40% of our board is they are international uh, um, uh, figures such as the vice chairman, he is well known, uh, Mr. Toby Landau, and for example, Ms. Abby Smutney, which is the global head of the ADR and litigation in the uh, Whiten case. Uh, the well-known international uh, 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 law firm, and in addition to uh, well-known well figures um, uh, from the private sector and the legal uh, uh, legal background. So this is a very quick background. Uh, from that, I will move to uh, to the three topics related to each other. Uh, before I move to to the details in these three topics, I think it's clear to a lot of people that. If you would like the ADR industry, the alternative dispute resolution industry to be successful in any country, you need to have mainly three pillars, three, three kinds of support, the legislative support and governmental support and judicial support. And, uh, and I think the, the roadmap uh, in Saudi and the vision 2030 in particular, and the vision from the government was very clear to enhance and support the whole ADR system. Because if you have an uh, effective, efficient ADR system in a country, it is one of the main enablers of the businesses, investment, attracting foreign, for attracting foreign investment. Um, because as you can see in the second slide, I will start with the legislative support, different laws and regulations has been enacted in, SCC, in Saudi in, in general, and within the international best practices to support and help this industry. Starting from what we call it usually the golden year in 2020, uh, 2012, the uh, new arbitra uh, arbitration law, which is based on honest trial international uh, uh, model law, uh, has been issued. And I will, I will shed light about it uh, just in, in, in the coming slides. The enforcement law also in 2012, and then different laws and regulations. Um, yes, I will go to slide number 10. Um, uh, here in this slide, in slide number 10, <clears throat> Um, we will see just some focus about these two important laws. What I would like to highlight related to the, what it called the new arbitration law in Saudi, it is based on the honest trial, the United Nations uh, um, uh, model law in this regard, which is give um, uh, great support to arbitration. So for example, the arbitral award is final in Saudi, like the best practices all around the world. There is um, uh, this, new, uh, uh, this new law supported the party's autonomy. So the parties, they can choose in arbitration, any applicable law, it's not the Saudi, not only the Saudi laws and regulations, you, they can choose any applicable law, any language, any, any place to hold their, the, the hearings. Also, they can choose any arbitrators without any restriction related to the uh, language, nationality, gender, religion, which is very important for the success of arbitration. In addition to that, different aspects of court support, such as appointing arbitrators in ad hoc arbitration, interim measures, uh, uh, et cetera. So the, uh, what I can summarize uh, uh, related to the new arbitration law, it's within the international best practices. The, the second part in this slide, as you can see in the bottom, which is the quantum leap has been uh, uh, um, uh, started in, SCC, uh, in Saudi by the issuance or, uh, uh, of the new uh, enforcement law. Uh, at least the movement of the enforcement of arbitral award from the administrative uh, course 
to specialized enforced court. And within these enforcement court, we have specialized judges and chambers. And they are with special training and special education to deal with the enforcement of local and international arbitral award, which is really important that 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 that, that makes uh, the, the uh, easy, fast and effective enforcement of the uh, arbitral award. And you will see uh, the result of that in some coming slides. You will see some numbers and examples of the effective in, uh, enforcement. Uh, in this slide, one of the milestones, big milestones. Um, and before I mention this, um, before 2019, the, uh, all the governmental entities, semi-governmental entities, they were banned from using or they were restricted in using arbitration in their contracts. So, but the, the game has been changed starting from January, January 2019 by the issuance of this royal decree. In this royal decree, um, it supported the governmental entities and government agencies um, to settle their dispute with foreign, especially with foreign investors through arbitration um, after securing the approval necessarily to do that. And it has been mentioned SCCA in particular, which is great uh, uh, development and game changer, as I can say. And also in the second slide, you will see another important legislative de development, which is the issuance of the new Saudi governmental and tenders recruitment law. In that law, uh, again, until even uh, in January 2019, it's a condition for any governmental entities, if they would like to include the arbitration in their contracts, they have to get an approval from the, uh, from the cabinet, from the Council of Ministers. But starting from uh, August uh, 2019, now that is not is not needed anymore. So they are all, only they can cooperate with the Ministry of Finance. And now the Ministry of Finance, they have uh, an automated system to grant that approval. And I will see more easiness of uh, for the governmental entities and semi-governmental entities uh, for including the arbitration in their contracts in uh, in the coming slides. If I move to the second slides. Um, um, uh, what, one of the things that also I would like to mention now is moving from the legislative, support, and this is just an example. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just would like to give an example. Just in one year, 2019, in one year, more than six laws and regulations and royal decrees has been issued only to support ADR in Saudi Arabia and make it more efficient. Moving from that to the governmental support, if you can see in slide number 14, the second slide, one of the things is really important. After the issuance of the new tender and recruitment law, the, uh, the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Finance, he issued a resolution in December 2019. By that, they issued 14 standard governmental contract. Uh, in all of that contract for all governmental entities, semi-governmental entities, the default clause for settling dispute is the institutional arbitration and has been mentioned SCCA under SCCA rules and SCCA uh, management. If I'd like to move quickly to the second slide, one of the things also uh, that I would like to mention in this regard is the uh, different cooperation with different governmental entities. One of it, the, the support from the government for Saudi to join one of the most important international treaties, which is uh, Singapore Convention, which is related to the mediation. Uh, we are proud to say Saudi Arabia is the third country globally to ratify this convention, and also Saudi Arabia, one of the founding signatories in 2019. Moving forward, uh, uh, another cooperation areas between SCCA and different ministries and governmental entities to enhance the uh, ADR in Saudi, such as including SCCA model clause in the Minister of Commerce guiding contracts, such as meeting different investors all around the world with the Minister of Investment, working with, for example, General Authority of Military Industries, um, uh, uh, different uh, uh, regulators, we are working close with them to enhance the quality and to make it easier to use and to enforce uh, 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 ADR in Saudi Arabia. Moving forward in the second slide, I will move very quickly to, judi to the judicial support. And I think it's really important, and all of you knows that it's a big mile, a, 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 yeah, it's a cornerstone in the success of ADR industry is the cooperation uh, of the judicial system. And we are proud, as you can see in the second slide, the judicial system, they are very cooperative. And for example, we have a lot of uh, cooperation and initiatives, 
such as uh, referring cases from the commercial court to SCCA to be managed and settled through mediation. And the success ratio of these cases were very high. And also uh, training the judges, SCCA <coughs> as expert in this, sorry, <coughs> We are training the related judges within the best uh, international best, best practices. Uh, if you move to the second slide also, uh, part of this is the effective enforcement of the uh, international and local arbitral award. Uh, and as you can see in this slide, um, uh, uh, different examples. But what I would like to say, just a few weeks ago, the Minister of Justice, they announced a press release and they give uh, details of the of the numbers of the enforcement of <coughs> international arbitral awards in addition the enforce uh, the settlement out of mediation and conciliation it jumps more than 600 percent in the in the in the last few years comparing two years be before which is illustrating the the clear vision and the will from the government and also from the judicial system is to enforce and to support the uh, ADR. Moving forward in the second slide, uh, here just in, in the coming uh, few minutes, I would like just to shed light more about SCCA. Uh, if we can move to the second slide also, I will start by having, um, you can say, efficient and world-class um, uh, 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 um, uh, rules such as arbitration rules, mediation rules, code of conduct, and also we have the best facilities and also equipments uh, like con conference, uh, 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 con uh, remote conference equipments and uh, translation equipments, and we have office in Riyadh, uh, Eastern Province, Western Province, in addition to our uh, um, our uh, RIP office in, in uh, one of the uh, uh, free zones in Saudi. Moving forward, also, SCCA proud to have uh, the, uh, and to hire the best calibers and uh, team in arbitration. We are proud in our team to be from 10 nationalities, <coughs> speaking six languages, and they are specialized in ADR in particular in other related specialties. Moving forward, another, another aspect that also I would like to mention in this regard, all of that has been illustrated in a trust. And this trust could be illustrated in three areas as example here. First of all, I think uh, all of you knows, uh, know exactly all of these brands for well-known international law firms, such as the, the names that are already there. All of them, they wrote uh, uh, independently about the development in, in a positive way about SCCA rules, SCCA practice, the development in Saudi Arabia, and which is uh, a result of the long journey has been taken and part of that journey, uh, I share it with you in the past slide. Another aspect I would like to, ask, uh, to, to share here, sorry if I would like to go back to the, 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 the previous slide, is the cooperation agreement that we have with international well-known uh, 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 international uh, 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 organizations such as UNICEF trial, Triple A, Charter uh, Institute of Arbitrators. In addition to that, in the same slide, in the in the left uh, in the left side, that for example, like the Permanent Court of Arbitration in Hague, they have trust in SCCA. So we started to cooperate, and they referred cases to SCCA to appoint as appointing authorities in some cases based on UNICEF trial rules. Uh, moving forward to the second slide, also one of the things that I would like to mention that SCCA could uh, uh, um, could deal with UNICETRAL to to recognize the the Saudi uh, the new Saudi arbitration law uh, as based on uh, UNICETRAL rules and also the mediation convention. On the on the left side, in the same slide, you will see SCCA. Uh, just a few weeks ago, the UNICETRAL they added SCCA in their website in the list they they have for the international center as only one of three centers in the Arab world. They are providing the the full service, the three services. Uh, as appointing authority based on UNICETRAL rules and having arbitration rules based on UNICETRAL and also providing other services based on UNICETRAL. And only one out of 19 centers globally, SCCA is among these elite of centers globally. So we are proud of that. Moving forward, uh, I think one of the aspects that a lot of people, they will ask us about our roster, our arbitrators, male and female arbitrators and mediators. We are proud to have more than 30, 300 arbitrators from more than 26 nationalities, they are speaking in uh, 19 languages. They are specialized in more than 20 fields such as banking, oil and gas, capital market, uh, uh, etc. Moving forward, I think all of that, all of that efforts will be resulted in a trust. Um, everyone knows the, uh, the ADR life cycle. It will start by building the trust. 
if you buy the trust, the company, they will, uh, companies and organizations, they will start including the model clause of the arbitra uh, arbitration centers and all of these flags for these giant uh, cross-border uh, uh, activities companies, um, such as Aramco, the biggest company all around the world, Spark, Sasrif, and also Siemens, some companies, they are not Saudis in different fields. And they are they started to include SCCA model clause in, in their contracts. Uh, and also that has been illustrated, as you can see in the second uh, slide, the, the case load that we have in SCCA. Yes, we are four years old, but I think the case load that we could build, uh, the number of the cases has been registered in SCCA in the, in the past four years is, is very promising. So 50% of our case law is in construction. Uh, after that will come the capital market, banking and finance, and then going to medical, uh, entertainment, engineering, education, etc. Another part of the, the trust, the, the cases that we receive, not only from Saudi companies, uh, the companies that we registered their cases is from all of these flags all around the world, starting from North America to Europe, to Arab countries, uh, to Asia, and uh, which is another important aspect. That also will take me to the second slide, uh, which is, the, um, um, uh, I would like to stop here with this slide. I think, as I mentioned earlier, that we promised to be, um, uh, to be within the international best practices and to institutionalize that promise that we launched in October 2019, our advisory committee. And as you can say, these uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, they are one of the best well-known experts from all around, from 11 countries all around the world. They are supporting SCCA in developing our rules, in developing our services, and that will be illustrated in the coming slide, the, the, the big range of services that we are providing in SCCA. Uh, and here, I think I will stop and I will move the microphone to my colleague, Kristen Alberti. Thank you very much. And I will come back during the question and answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Hamid. And it's also a pleasure for me uh, to be with you today, even though only virtually. Uh, the second part of this presentation, uh, we have reserved for what we call the SCCA services, as well as uh, recent uh, case trends or highlights, I shall call them. So the first part here about SCCA services, as you imagine, SSCA is a full stop, full shop uh, service provider for ADR. Uh, we do offer, of course, arbitration. We do offer mediation, and I will go step by step through the products that you see here on the screen. Uh, we do also offer services for the ad hoc market, ad hoc market being the non administrative cases where the SSCA is not written into the uh, arbitration clause and uh, the parties uh, basically um, go through the process by themselves. But here we offer something called limited services such as selection and appointment services, and as also offer our committee for administrative decisions. And I will go through those also step by step. Last but not least, uh, on this slide on the bottom right, you see something called uh, an appeals court nomination project, which is very unique to SSEA. And I'll also be happy to further talk about that. Next slide, please. So arbitration, let's start with arbitration. Uh, uh, Dr. Hamid mentioned already that the Saudi arbitration law is is on the model law. Uh, uh, to no surprise, the SSCA arbitration rules are based on the UNCTRAL arbitration rules. Uh, they have been drafted uh, in conjunction and in partnership with the SSC, uh, ICDR AAA. And so if you're familiar with the ICDR rules, uh, the text of the SSCA rules may not be that uh, uh, unfamiliar to you. Next slide, please. What you see here are some highlights about the uh, SEC arbitration rules. And I think it's fair to say that throughout the rules, you see uh, party autonomy being embedded here. It starts with the choice to be represented by whoever you want. So you can choose your attorney, lawyer. It doesn't have to be a lawyer, of course. Uh, whoever you uh, feel comfortable with being represented in your arbitration. Uh, and later also mediation. Uh, arbitrate appointment, uh, parties may uh, you know, find a selection method. Otherwise, the default mechanism is one arbitrator, and we would use something we call the list or strike and range list method uh, uh, that is based on the SCCA roster of arbitrators that Dr. Ahmed mentioned earlier. Uh, arbitrators, of course, have to be impartial, independent, and there is throughout the entire process a duty to make disclosures uh, for any justifiable doubts as to the impartiality and independence. We also do have um, a committee for administrative decisions. I will address this in more detail later. Uh, we also have a joiner provision, and I can perhaps give away that we're also considering in our rules revision, which is ongoing, uh, to also think about consolidation provisions in the near future. 
Uh, as for the arbitration, uh, everything that you see in the arbitration rules is uh, geared towards an expedited resolution. Uh, use of technology is uh, heavily um, promoted. Uh, also, parties are uh, required to make every effort to avoid unnecessary delay and expense. Uh, again, efficiency economy is uh, really embedded in the SSA arbitration rules to ensure you go through this process very quickly and efficiently. Uh, equality of treatment is embedded as well. Uh, same as due process considerations. Think of the uh, right to present your case, to, to be heard. Uh, we have also provisional emergency relief, which we will address shortly. Uh, same also with interim measures for the main arbitration. We have expedited procedure rules, which I also will address on a separate cover. And then finally, we have uh, a review process of the award to ensure quality. And the award has to be rendered within 60 days of the closing of the proceedings. Uh, needless to say, there is privacy, confidentiality worked into the rules, and we work and currently operate under something called the ad valorem fee schedule based on the value uh, in dispute. But here again, I can also give away that we're considering in, uh, in short order to um, uh, publish a new appendix one on costs and fees that would also allow for alternative fee arrangements that is allow parties to agree to uh, hourly rates for the arbitrators. Next slide. What you see here are a quick overview of the expedited arbitration rules. Uh, these do apply automatically whenever you write in the SSA arbitration rules into your contract, um, but they have to be, the contract has to be dated uh, October 15th, uh, 2018 or later. Also, they do apply automatically if the dispute does not exceed 4 million. Of course, you can opt out of it, but you can also opt into it if your dispute is higher than 4 million. Of course, certain parameters have to be respected, but otherwise it's possible to opt into uh, the expedited procedures also and the amount is let's say five or six million and so forth. Uh, the selection method, it's one arbitrator, sole arbitrator. We use a list of five names, uh, two strikes are allowed uh, to ensure that it is always one high spring arbitrator and the list has to be returned in, in 10 days. Again, it goes to show this is a very streamlined expedited process to address those smaller claims that may arise in life of a business. Uh, in the middle part, you see the general time frame. The award has to be rendered 30 days after the closure of the proceedings. And in any event, it has to be closed 180 days after the constitution of the arbitral tribunal. That's kind of a sort of a upper cap, if you will. Next slide. On this slide, you see our emergency arbitration process. Here, the highlights are in short uh, that you get a same day initiation unless you file really at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, the arbitrator will be appointed, the emergency arbitrator will be appointed within one business day uh, in case of any disclosures, which are rare because we make an administrative appointment based uh, on uh, uh, candidates that are usually not conflicted to avoid this entire issue. But if it happens, uh, the challenge has to be submitted within one business day and will be decided within three following that uh, uh, challenge. Replacement, if necessary, will also be done within one business day. And perhaps more importantly, once the emergency arbitrator has been appointed, uh, he or she must submit a procedural timetable within two business days of his or her appointment, laying out the process of the next steps in this process. Uh, the outcome is an order or interim award, so you have both options here. This has to happen within 14 days uh, from the file being handed over to the emergency arbitrator, essentially the appointment of the arbitrator. And uh, he or she has the power to order or award provisional or precautionary measures as she or she, 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 she deems appropriate. Now, as for the standards, the applicant, uh, usually the claimant, has to show that the, his, uh, that the harm is not adequately repairable by an award of damages. Uh, he or she also has to show that the harm substantially outweighs the harm that would likely be the result to the party against uh, whom that application is being made. And finally, he or she has to show that uh, there is a reasonable possibility that the applicant or the claimant will succeed on the merits in the main arbitration. So these are the emergency arbitrations. Next slide. If we can have the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, here we have an overview of the so-called online dispute uh, uh, resolution mechanism or protocol. Uh, Audio in short, uh, very happy and very pleased to uh, say that we have just relaunched uh, this entire platform in hand with lots of enhancements technologically, but also in terms of the protocol itself. This is meant to address 
uh, claims that do not exceed 200,000 real in, in value and uh, can help individuals, but also SMEs, uh, small and medium enterprises, as well as even the biggest companies uh, with low value mass claims. So it's really designed to address those small claims that individuals may have, but also the big companies that uh, usually don't have the time to devote to the smaller claims that are just sitting on the uh, general counsel's desk. Uh, uh, registration, and, uh, generally the entire process uh, can be done 24 seven. Uh, it's all done online and your submission will be exchanged uh, through the platform and without any physical meetings. Uh, hearings, traditional hearings are not envisioned but can be requested. Uh, and perhaps most importantly, the final award will be rendered within 30 calendar days from the appointment of the, arbit the sole arbitrator. Needless to say, it's a safe and secure platform and uh, the time and cost savings are quite aggressive. In fact, we have uh, a creative flat rate for this uh, that comes at 9,000 real, uh, including SSCA fees and the sole arbitrator compensation. So for 9,000, you get the entire process. And traditionally, this is envisioned to be done anywhere between 30 to 60 days uh, on the upper limit uh, in order to resolve the entire dispute. So again, a very effective, very fast, speedy process for low value mass claims. Next slide. Now, moving on to mediation. Uh, mediation, we have the traditional mediation, but we're also for new product. If we go to the next slide, we'll see some highlights of the mediation rules. Uh, in particular here again, party autonomy is embedded here as well. You choose your representative as you please. Uh, the one mediator, I've rarely seen more than one, uh, mediator will be appointed. So the default mechanism here again is a list method, uh, again drawn from the SSCA mediator roster, Dr. Uh, Hamid had alluded to earlier. Uh, the mediator has to be impartial, independent, same context or concept as also in arbitration. Only here in mediation, the difference is that a challenge or an objection leads to an immediate replacement. There's truly no point in having a challenge uh, decided by the SSCA when at least one party has no um, uh, comfort in uh, that mediator sitting on that case. Logically, you know, a good outcome may come out of that. Uh, the mediator, however, has to conduct uh, this uh, mediation based on the principle of uh, party self-determination. That is, uh, he or she will facilitate the negotiation, but will not try to evaluate the party's case. In fact, the media should not impose and will not impose a settlement, but will rather attempt to help them reach an agreement. So again, it's a facilitative negotiation in the sense, if you will. Uh, as far as the uh, proceeding itself is concerned, the mediator has the possibility to have caucuses, meaning separate meetings with the parties to understand their case better and have any communications the mediator deems appropriate. Again, everyone has to be treated in a fair and efficient manner. Uh, privacy and confidentiality is also as of key here. And in fact, anything divulged during the mediation should not be introduced into the adversarial process, such as an SSC arbitration that may follow this. Uh, Cost-wise, this also follows the ad valorem fee schedule model. Next slide, please. What you see on this slide is what we have developed in response uh, to the pandemic uh, last year in May. Uh, what you've seen, businesses shut down while the costs continue to grow. Uh, but also the courts have shut down. So we try to really find a process that assists parties in resolving the dispute without any court involvement whatsoever at uh, the um, um, uh, um, dispute resolution uh, uh, level. So we thought of uh, something called the Emergency Mediation Program, one short EMP. It is a fully remote process uh, with a dedicated platform. Uh, perhaps most importantly, that's very unique to SCA, and I'm not sure anyone else has ever done this uh, before or will do this in the near future. We as the SCA private uh, arbitration institution are um, empowered to convert uh, in assistance with uh, the Ministry of Justice, the settlement agreement into a final and enforceable bond. Again, without court intervention, that was very key in this entire process. So direct enforcement can be accomplished through the enforcement court. Uh, the very limited grants for refuse that usually hover around uh, public policy, Sharia compliance perhaps, and also the ability to settle in the dispute. Uh, the fees are very, again, aggressive in a positive sense that are reduced compared to the uh, normal uh, fee schedule. And our vision is to uh, uh, take this conversion uh, approach of uh, having enforceable bonds uh, in the near future and see whenever this EMP project may expire because the pandemic may at one point go away to see whether this survives in some other form in our other mediation uh, rules settings. Next slide, please. <coughs> 
Now, briefly limited services, I mentioned that earlier, we have also services for ad hoc cases. Um, on the next slide, you will see three of those services. The first one is list only service, which means parties can simply come to the SCCA and say, uh, we just need a list of five, 10 or 15 names and nothing further. It could even be that one party is there as well. I have an ad hoc case. I need to uh, find an, uh, a party selected arbitrator. Can you help me with a couple of names in a certain region of the world? And so that we do with the list only service. A step further than that is the list and appointment service. Uh, basically also uh, there will be a list given to this time both parties. They strike their names. They don't like the, rank, the remaining names. Uh, and the SCCA appoints the highest ranked arbitrator. Uh, checks any conflicts, decides any challenges, and ends the service. Last but not least, uh, we also do uh, administrative appointment services. Uh, Dr. Hamid mentioned earlier, and we're very happy about that, you have seen our first PCA mandate as an appointing authority. So they essentially uh, parties, or in this case, an institution comes to us and mandates us to just simply appoint the arbitrator, or three arbitrators, and uh, that's where our service ends. Of course, we always invite parties to then consider taking full administration, but uh, again, that's the party's choice at that point. Uh, our services end with this limited um, um, uh, mandate. Next slide, please. Now, the Committee on Administrative Decisions, uh, a very important development that we have uh, uh, introduced uh, not too long ago. It is uh, a, a committee of highly exp experienced decision makers uh, that are supposed to address three things. Uh, first, arbitrator challenges. Second, number of arbitrator disputes. And thirdly, lastly, place of arbitration disputes. Uh, very often you have uh, the issue of consistency and continuity. Uh, we thought this uh, committee would uh, do a great service for SEC administrative, but also non SEC administrative cases, uh, whenever such a dispute comes around. Those three are traditionally those three disputes that really uh, drive uh, an arbitration or are the most uh, disturbing or disruptive uh, um, uh, issues that you may encounter in arbitration. When I say non administrative cases, that means also that you, for a small charge, uh, can uh, request the committee, the SCCA committee, to do the decision in this regard uh, on a talk case. So it is possible to even buy this very limited service uh, on a talk basis. Uh, the structure is very simple, straightforward. We have five committee members. Three must be present for a decision. So the quorum is three members. And uh, the committee meets whenever necessary and also on emergency arbitration situations uh, as quickly as we can. Next slide, please. The next slide, you will see uh, the fee five uh, members of the SSCA committee. Uh, the top left, you will see uh, Dr. Ziad. Uh, he is a very uh, known uh, Saudi uh, arbitrator, international arbitrator. Um, you also see uh, very familiar faces, perhaps from other institutions. Uh, for example, Ms. Sarah Lancaster, she's the former registrar of uh, the LCIA in London. You have Ms. Magnuson former Secretary General of the SEC in Stockholm. You see uh, Ms. Kirby, she's the former Deputy Secretary of the ICC in Paris. And uh, on the bottom right, you see my name being the former Assistant Vice President of the AICDR and current uh, um, SSCA Chief of ADR. Next slide. So you see a lot of uh, firepower, if you will, experience. Uh, all those five uh, folks have done this for a very long time. They know what they're doing and give hopefully comfort to parties to know that they're in good hands if and whenever a challenge may arise. Now, lastly, we have something called Appeals Court Nomination Project. Uh, Dr. Hamid mentioned earlier appointments uh, of uh, arbitrators is important. Uh, but what happens in a talk case if, let's say, the respondent is not responsive? Uh, the claimant essentially, according to the Saudi arbitration law, as in so many other uh, national jurisdictions, has to go to the court and ask uh, the court and hope that the court swiftly will appoint an arbitrator for the respondent or all three arbitrators or a sole arbitrator. Now, this can take time because courts are busy. They may not always be in the best uh, position to find a suitable candidate. So we offered our services uh, back in uh, 2019 uh, to essentially assist the courts to uh, identify our suitable arbitrators. We call this a nomination so that the court can turn that name around, that candidate around and appoint that candidate based on whatever they have requested us to look into. Uh, we have seen 87 cases so far and has been quite successful. Perhaps one more highlight is that in 2020, we have uh, uh, nominated the first female arbitrator, which was then uh, without any further ado, appointed by the court in August of 2020. And final highlight perhaps here, the uh, average nomination is around two days. Next slide, please. Now, let's talk briefly to uh, the recent Saudi case law on the next slide. You will see a quick overview 
of uh, five cases that I picked for today's presentation. Uh, they all go to show that, as Dr. Ahmed has mentioned uh, earlier, that there's an arbitration-friendly environment in, in Saudi Arabia, and you find uh, uh, now these, these days very pro-arbitration-friendly judiciary. And these uh, five uh, decisions here only show this all the more so. The first one on the next slide has to do with uh, the missing party, uh, missing the party agreement uh, with regard to time limits to arbitrates can make an arbitration clause ineffective. So what happened here is uh, the, the plaintiff of the arbitration respondent uh, asked the court to appoint uh, the arbitrator for the respondent who was otherwise unwilling to arbitrate. Now the clause provided for arbitration of course, but article 19.3 of that arbitration clause also provided that uh, there's a restriction to referral to arbitration uh, with regards to the timeline. It had to occur within two months. And what happens is that the, uh, the plaintiff missed on this deadline. And so the court dismissed the plaintiff's motion to appoint an arbitrator for the respondent because uh, the plaintiff had not done so within two months and referred the plaintiff obviously then to the competent courts uh, for full consideration of the dispute. So again, uh, missing out timelines uh, or time limits and arbitration clauses is uh, uh, crucial and the clauses can become ineffective. So again, good uh, sign uh, to uh, embrace party autonomy. When the parties agree to something, this will be honored. Next slide, please. Um, one of the questions we very, see very often uh, in uh, our caseload or whenever we deal with our foreign uh, parties is, uh, so to what extent does uh, Sharia uh, play a role in, in arbitration. Of course, in Saudi Arabia, Sharia is, of course, very important. Uh, as you know, this is the law. So to look at the Sharia compliance test uh, is an important key aspect here as well. But at the same time, these two uh, cases I have uh, prepared here for you today will also show and hopefully give comfort uh, to not uh, get the pr uh, impression that this is just something where you can say to the court, I wish you to vacate the award because I believe it's against Sharia concepts. Rather, you have to show and prove and show that this violates and uh, what the court have found well-established or authoritative and unambiguous provisions of the Quran Sunnah. So also the second uh, case has very well established that you have to show an authoritative uh, and unambiguous provision and otherwise you cannot simply just say it's against the Sharia, that's not what it works. You have to really show that there is a reason why this should be set aside based on Sharia, non-compliance. Next slide. On the next slide, I also gave you one example that has to do with lost profits. If we can go to the next slide, please. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, so awarding lost profits uh, can, doesn't have to be, but can be usually a violation of Sharia. Uh, this was a decision that was very interesting from 2019 and the Jeddah Court of Appeals. What essentially happened here is the plaintiff uh, in the arbitration, this was the arbitration respondent, challenged the award of three grounds. Uh, the two of which, the first two of which are not so relevant for us today, the third one is. The third one was about uh, the argument that the award violated Sharia by granting the arbitration claimant uh, 200,000 in, in, in profits, if you will, following the end of a partnership that the two parties had. Uh, perhaps also noteworthy is that the, uh, uh, the, the profit was um, uh, around 20% of the capital. Now, of course, the arbitration claim encountered that uh, the profits consisted of compensation for loss of benefits. The court rejected the first two counts, which was quite uh, uh, obvious uh, uh, considering the case um, um, situation. However, the third count, <coughs> the challenge on Sharia uh, violation, here the court found that the payment of profits constitutes usury and set aside that uh, part of the award. <coughs> What is perhaps here noteworthy is that uh, the court uh, has uh, had the vision to just basically set aside that piece of the award that was contrary to Sharia while leaving the rest of the award intact. It also, and this was very interesting for everyone, uh, they have for, further explained that uh, such uh, profits or those profits in this context, in this particular context, are not permissible under Sharia. Uh, and it's not permissible to pay compensation for such detention, even though it was two years wrongly determined to attend the uh, 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 detained uh, by the respondent. Also, perhaps interestingly clarified that even if you call this a profit or a compensation, this does not change the fact that in this instance, this was regarded as usury. So very interesting decision here to further shed light on uh, a reason why uh, a case may be set aside. Next slide, please.
If we can go to the next slide, please. This case is interesting in so far as it further explains uh, a couple of things. It defines a very important article in the Saudi arbitration law. Article 40 of the Saudi arbitration law provides that unless the parties agree to a time frame to the arbitration, the arbitration clause, for example, the award shall be issued within 12 months from the date of commencement. And uh, what happened here in this case is that the plaintiff, the respondent in the arbitration, um, tried to request the court to order the termination of the arbitration because uh, he argued that the, the arbitration passed the 12 months mark. Um, and, and while the court then went back to the tribunal and got some more information, it found out that uh, essentially the tribunal tried to appoint an expert for which it also requested both sides to provide payments, uh, anticipation or advancements of the fees for the expert. And it was the very plaintiff in the court proceeding that actually laid payment. In essence, the court then found that uh, the um, uh, 12 months mark uh, is a provision that relates to um, uh, 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 the idea of uh, expediting arbitration, but it's not an absolute in nature. So you can go on beyond the 12 months. And this was particularly important in this case here because it really showed that the court had the vision, uh, pragmatic vision, I shall say, to avoid that a plaintiff can create his own dilemma, delay and then turn around and say the 12 months have been have expired and try to get the award uh, or in this case the arbitration terminated for reasons the plaintiff himself had created so very interesting um, uh, decision here and again the big takeaway is that the 12 months period in the saudi arbitration was not absolutely major uh, next slide please and this is the last slide for today. Uh, an award must end the dispute or else can get vacated. Uh, an interesting decision came out of the Eastern Province Court of Appeals in 2019. Uh, here we had uh, a lot of uh, historic backgrounds, but essentially what happened is the uh, uh, tribunalists eventually had determined that it has no jurisdiction. They called it a uh, lack of territorial jurisdiction which was an interesting uh, terminology in this context. Uh, the plaintiff went to the court and tried to set aside the award, uh, essentially uh, arguing that it conflicts with Article 40. Article 40 says clearly that uh, an award must end the dispute of the parties. The court concurred with that, it agreed, and also agreed with the two reasons for vacator and under Article 50. The first one is Article 51F, which provides that an award can be vacated when rendered on matters not covered by the arbitration agreement. The second reason came from Article 51G, which provides that it can be vacated when the tribunal does not observe the conditions required for the award in a manner affecting its substance. Uh, here the argument was the tribunal uh, should have addressed the substance of the uh, dispute, uh, but it stopped, stopped short of that and uh, really relied on the form and basically uh, the, decided the case uh, on territorial jurisdiction, uh, leaving it open-ended. The arbitration essentially was basically found to not be with the right tribunal, if you will, in a sense. Uh, but that, again, is against Article 40. And for that reason, the court has set aside the award. Perhaps one last comment here before I close. Uh, we have looked at 525 plus uh, the decisions uh, to date. We are currently working on a project where we essentially review decisions, uh, judgments from the courts. And uh, to the extent I have uh, put my nose into this right now, I came across uh, around 65 vacated proceedings uh, where, again, um, arbitration respondent tried to set aside the award uh, through the courts, and only five were successful. So that is, in essence, around 5% success rate on vacated proceedings. Uh, if you compare this to the international standards, uh, it's, uh, if you believe the numbers, is around 10%. So it's even more proactive or pro-arbitration, if you will, in the Saudi Arabia from what I've seen so far. And this was one of the cases. So it even shows you those five cases that have actually been uh, set aside. There was a reason behind this. And this is one of those five. And with that, I conclude. And I thank you for your um, attention. And I'm ready for any questions. Wonderful. Uh, Dr. Hamid, uh, Christian, this is, uh, has been a, a, a very informative uh, and simply just a plethora of information. Uh, as I mentioned initially, uh, uh, change is a constant and change is absolutely a constant uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as these programs are being implemented uh, that only continue to support that Saudi Arabia is in fact open for business. Uh, a couple of quick things before we get into some of the questions that struck me was, it seemed that this entire program that you that we have been witnessing and hearing about today from a, uh, an attendee's perspective 
to me, uh, in my humble opinion, it seemed like it was extremely well thought out in its creation. It seemed like it was born, um, yes, with, with le the legal aspects uh, in mind, but also from logic and common sense. Uh, and also, most importantly, scalability. I was very much uh, encouraged and impressed uh, and interested to hear about uh, the, uh, the aspect of the, when you discuss low value and mass claims, uh, uh, under 200,000 uh, uh, Saudi rials. Uh, to me, uh, as this would uh, be seem seemingly uh, address created to address SMEs, the small to medium enterprises, that was very encouraging uh, from my perspective as a great deal of what we do here at the Saudi U.S. Saudi Business Council is is we spend a great deal of time encouraging and looking for the those young uh, Saudi entrepreneurs and U.S. Uh, entrepreneurs that are are hungry to create opportunity and create uh, uh, for themselves and jointly together uh, that don't fall into the you know hundred million SAR. Or the you know they the and and these uh, as as these organizations uh, strive to participate in Saudi Arabia in areas of manufacturing, production, assembly, um, entertainment, you name it. Um, they are in fact a key uh, uh, a key component to these large mega operations. Uh, that have tremendous offtake, daily offtake of goods and services. But yet these, these smaller entities, this is what, the, what I typically hear when I'm speaking with small to medium enterprises is, I, I know nothing about doing business over there. And I understand that there's great opportunity and would love to participate. But I think I'm just going to get eaten alive if we get into some sort of a legal you know, situation because I'm just, I'm a little guy. And so that was that was just wonderful to hear. The other one was the the COVID EMP. Uh, uh, my gosh, that's just brilliant. Uh, uh, the, that concept of what happens because we know it's going to come back, and we don't know for how long it'll get better and it'll get worse. So uh, absolutely fantastic. So with that, uh, gentlemen, I'm going to uh, address a couple of uh, or, or ask a couple of questions that have been submitted. I'll leave it to you as to who raises her hand and says. Uh, I'll take this one. Um, the um, there was one here that was kind of interesting. Now there's this arbitration system that's in place. What if uh, uh, either party can a foreign arbitrator, uh, arbitration providers, can they operate in Saudi Arabia, or is this the entity that will be in place for all situations? Um, if you allow me, uh, thank you again, Mr. Roosevelt, and if you allow me, Christian, that I will jump here. Um, um, uh, by the way, SCCA is not the only arbitration center in Saudi. There, now, there are some other centers that are operating already in Saudi Arabia. Yes, SCCA is the oldest. Among them, SCCA is the biggest uh, among them. Uh, but all in all, it's not a, it's not a, one, it's not a one, one center. In addition to that, um, um, uh, to have an arbitral award issued by any in any arbitration center globally, it will be effectively enforced in Saudi, no doubt about that. And the opposite, because this is part of Saudi to, to be a signatory in a New York convention. So now 168 countries all around the part of that. So any enforcement, any arbitral award will be uh, issued there. It will be enforced here and uh, vice versa. So this is the, the, the two points that I would like to mention in this regard. Wonderful. Um, so are there um, are there are there some disputes that would not be eligible either according to, per the, the size of the, the dispute or the industry that the dispute is related to that would not be um, subject or allowed to, to go to arbitration? Um, also again, if you allow me Christian, um, I think any cases um, from from one real or one US dollar to limitless, uh, it's, um, it's within the scope of SCCA in particular and arbitration in general in Saudi Arabia as per the laws and regulations here. And again, all, uh, all kind of commercial cases 
uh, is is eligible to be uh, to to go to ECCA and also to arbitration in Saudi Arabia. The only exempted uh, cases, as I can say, any cases related to uh, the um, um, is not a commercial cases such as anything related to the um, uh, um, um, uh, to the to the to the family disputes such as. Uh, um, um, uh, anything related to the family, that all commercial cases are eligible to be under SCCA and arbitration. Chris, if you'd like to add anything. I would say uh, we, we don't divorce couples, so for that you have to go to court. <laughs> but beyond <laughs> that, uh, we do uh, certainly in Saudi Arabia something that we are also familiar with in the United States, uh, uh, employment arbitration, as well as labor arbitration, is arbitrable. Uh, you don't find that, for example, to be the case in Europe, or most of Europe, I shall say, to avoid any exceptions. Um, so uh, arbitration is uh, possible so long as the subject matter is arbitrable. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. Amis said, commercial disputes. Uh, this has spanned uh, so broadly over the years, the decades. Uh, we're arbitrating things we have never thought we were going to arbitrate 50 years ago. And, and here we have it now these days. Uh, certainly, uh, I'm not 100% sure how that works, perhaps with patent disputes, uh, which only, I think, of the United States started in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. and then only inter partes, uh, whether that is arbitrable in, in Saudi Arabia. I would see, uh, assume the same concept would apply in Saudi Arabia as well. But you will find here and there very distinct uh, subject matter areas that are probably a little more dicey. But uh, uh, by and large, uh, the, uh, the spectrum is very wide, very open. Understood. Thank you. Uh, this is a, uh, a Saudi gentleman uh, asking this from a, uh, a Saudi perspective. And the question is, uh, it's not too long, but it's a little lengthy. With appreciation to all efforts by Saudi governmental and non-governmental entities to encourage foreign investors to invest in the kingdom, Still, there are a number of them who have concerns to establish their businesses in KSA in light of misunderstanding of judicial systems, conflicts locally and internationally. As Saudis, how can we clarify this misunderstanding and convince them that we are open and welcoming to the world uh, to invest in Saudi Arabia? Thank you. I think, uh, I, I think part of the answer is to say, we have an Arabic saying, al jawab ma tarah la ma tasma'. What, what does it mean? The answer is what you say, what you see, not what you say. So this event is one of the answers that for that, uh, as simple as that outreach. We have to be more active in outreaching um, uh, here and there. And there, I, I, I honestly speaking, I see there is great efforts by, for example, Minister of Investment, the Council of Chambers. There is a lot of, you know, entities within Saudis and also the media playing very important role in this. And I think all of us, like us in arbitration, we have to reach out. We did a lot of road shows in different parts of the world, doing now like seminars. We are working with you, like the US uh, Saudi Business Council. So this is part of the answer. I think, yeah, maybe Chris, I think maybe he will, he will agree with me that I think big part of the challenge is um, they don't know what is there. For example, there is a lot of, of misperception about the country, laws, regulations, the practice, as soon as you give them the evidence and to come out to them and to say, this is what happened. And a lot of things will be changed. Chris, I don't, I don't know if you'd like to add anything. Uh, it, it's a very fast-paced environment uh, on, on top of everything Dr. Hamid just said, and I agree with everything he has said. Uh, it is uh, indeed uh, true that uh, the foreigners in any country doesn't apply only to Saudi Arabia. Whenever you go somewhere else, you all have concerns about uh, the environment uh, or the infrastructure, I shall say, that you operate in. And uh, you're unfamiliar with the law. That's fair. I mean, the same applies to you go to Russia, you go to the United States, uh, Absolutely. 50 states. Yeah. Uh, so you always find uh, that uh, something unknown is uh, uh, to be feared. Um, let me add one last point, perhaps uh, being uh, uh, non-Saudi. Uh, Sharia, for example, has often been uh, mentioned as something where uh, foreigners are afraid of because they don't quite understand. Uh, I can tell you that in the almost three years that I've been around, uh, it is it is very similar to what we know conceptually and otherwise. It codifies uh, all the uh, rule of law as we know it as well. And I think it's really worth to further explore it and to get comfortable with other than saying, I don't know it and that's why I don't like it. That doesn't work in arbitration. It doesn't work pretty much in anything in life. 
Absolutely. And, and so two terrific points. And one third and final point that I need to add in, uh, this is a, a great spot for us to, uh, to conclude, is to the gentleman who asked that question, what is it that we can do? The answer, my friend, is quite simple is just get the message out. And this message is so important. And I can tell you that in our, our activities here in the United States, uh, this is one of this, this question comes up within the first 10 to 15 minutes of every conversation I have with a US company. And I can tell you now that, that this program uh, that you've heard today as attendees, we as the US Saudi Business Council do do webinars and business roundtables for doing business with Aramco, for water projects, for construction projects, to uh, governors of states, to uh, economic development and business uh, 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 export organizations. Uh, you name it, we address those. And I, I can tell you that, that this message, as much of the components of what you've heard today, I'm hoping, inshallah, will be part of our regular uh, uh, message that we deliver to American organizations because this is such a, uh, a, a an important message to get through. As, as, as my father said, getting into business is easy. Getting out of a deal is where it becomes difficult. And, um, and so everything that you've discussed today is uh, absolutely relevant and timely uh, and very important. So uh, with that, we will uh, the, there are a few remaining questions, but we've come to, we've passed a little bit uh, past the, the top of the hour. We will get those questions addressed and return to you all. I thank you both very much for participating in this program and look forward to many more opportunities to deliver this most important message. So from all of us at the U.S. Saudi Business Council, from our dear friends, uh, 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 at the Saudi Center for Commercial Arbitration. We wish you all the best uh, and, and God bless. Thank you all very much.